Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to another edition of Hawaii in Uniform. I'm Calvin Griffin, your host, and thanks for tuning in. And for those of you who may not have seen the program before, here we talk about different issues concerning the military uh, and also veterans and how it interacts with the um, community. Today, I have two special guests. Uh, one is Caroline Galoyu, okay, and also Renee Patakio, right? Ritasio. Ritasio, okay. <laughs> All right. Before we get into our conversation, there's just one or two things I want to put out. <clears throat> if you're not familiar, uh, they have the Oahu Veterans Council or Center and in Foster Village, and there's a lot of good things going on down there with uh, different programs. One is that uh, on the 19th of July, there is a Hep C um, screening. So you might want to go down and check it out. If you have any questions about what's going on with them, uh, you can call 422-4000 and talk to Claire Levinson, and she'll give you an update on what's happening down there. Also, uh, there's been a news release at FEMA. It will be going door to door to let people know about, um, I guess, the insurance. Um, if you've suffered anything with the rains or whatever, uh, they'll be interviewing people. So if somebody knocks on your door, you know, might be them, but you can also call the cops and find out. <laughs> but that's it. Okay, at this point, um, Ms. Galoya, may I call you Caroline? Oh, please. please okay. Please. And may I call you Renee? Of course. Well, not the same time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Caroline, um, the organization you're with, uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. And one of the, what are some okay. of the things you do? Well, also, before I do that, I mm -hmm. want to tell you, my husband retired after 23 years in the Air Force, so we right. have a, a real connection here. Yeah. Um, our organization, which my husband is the uh, treasurer for, mm -hmm. what is he? He's, he's one of those. And it's Rainbow Family 808. And we stand up and advocate and and um, support all families, mm -hmm. meaning we're inclusive. We the people means right. everyone. Mm -hmm. And so when we started about four years ago, I'd already been working with uh, disadvantaged youth right. and with another organization. <clears throat> and this one came up because of the homeless teens on the street. Yeah. And that really touched me. Why in the world would parents allow their kids to be out on the street with no support? And so our focus, even though we do advocate for all families, mm -hmm. our focus right now is the youth. Because in the state of Hawaii, there is no law that gives them the right to check into a shelter. Uh -huh. And so every time a sh new shelter opens, I get angry mm -hmm. because I know that the kids are still going to be out there on the street. And the best our small organization, where 501c3 can do, mm -hmm. is provide fresh and f fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, and dairy for a whole week. We take it down once a week to Yo, which is Youth Outreach in Waikiki, mm -hmm. and our kids are very smart. They can get there from any part of the island, right. and they have a shower and whatnot. But that's basically what we do. So this next January, we're going to go back to the—we keep going back to the legislature, change those bills. They're the ones that make the the, the, the laws, mm -hmm. and so they have to change their law so that it allows the kids to check in. Okay. The question I have, we had talked offline when mm -hmm. I first met you. Um, the military dependents, there we have people who are— their parents are stationed over here, mm -hmm. and for some reason, they are out there on the streets. This is the first time I heard about this. Mm -hmm. How widespread is it, and what is the military doing to go ahead and address this issue, or, you know, what, what's happening? Well, uh, we haven't taken it to the military. One of the things was, uh, most of the times in the military, I remember, mm -hmm. uh, the military member doesn't want people in his home business. Mm -hmm. So the military, it has not been addressed to them as far as I know. Mm -hmm. How I came back to it was a couple of weeks ago, I was on base at, uh, what are they called? <laughs> I'm an old timer, so mm -hmm. uh, I was on HECL. <coughs> I was joint, but it was a joint forces 
Pearl Harbor Hickam event right. on Hickam. Mm -hmm. And it was the pride, a pride event. Mm -hmm. Listening to those young sailors and Air Force and Army and Marines that came, talk, some of them talked about joining the military to get away from home environments meaning that they were either being abused, it mm -hmm. can be me medical, physical, um, either because they're gay, because all, across the board, across the nation, and it works out here in Hawaii, 40 percent of all homeless youth are LGBT. Mm -hmm. And I'm just—see, I was almost in tears through the whole presentation, because I didn't—you know, hearing what some of them had come from. Yeah that they'd come to the military to get away from abuse. If they're gay, then it's not just abuse in the family, it can be abuse in the, in the community. Uh -huh. And we already know that. We have so many documented cases here in Hawaii. Okay. But there, there is that percentage. So whatever the percentage of military we have, which is a large percent because we have every Coast Guard as well, on this main island, mm -hmm. but then you also have them in varying degrees on all the other islands as well. Yeah. So you, we cannot, and I really believe that that's, but the, the kids don't want to tell you when they're in these, they're, they're hiding. Yeah, I think. Know. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on that. I hope I didn't come into this with a false impression that I had all the answers. But no. I have wanted to get on bases, yeah. and I'm just retired now, so I have no, really too, not too much standing, mm -hmm. um, other than I can go to the commissary and if I wanted to use the medical and whatnot. Right, yeah. But I would like to go to the, um, the spouses clubs. That's something that's changed since I my, retired in 90. Yeah. And so now we have spouses clubs. I'd like to come and, and just talk to them about it, yeah. because not everyone lives on base, but there's enough people that live on base that will notice all of a sudden a family member is missing. Hmm. We have to, and nobody wants to ask because we don't know. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things that go on in, within the military community. That's right. <clears throat> and some of the things we talk about here on the program. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a very close knit. There's a lot of things that happen that the public is not aware of, mm -hmm. you know, and the persona that you know, everything's hunky dory within the military community, which is not necessarily so. No. Because I think with some of the, my opinion or what I, I see here, is if there's any runaways that's from the military community, mm -hmm. it may not have to do with sexual orientation. That's right. Say, it okay. Have to be. But what it may also have to do is with the stresses that a lot of these families are under with the multiple deployments, things of that nature. That's right. Then, you know, the mom or dads are deployed, all these things come up and it's like, okay, I gotta get out of here or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. There may not be that mechanism in place within the military community to That's address right. what's going on with a lot of the younger people going mm -hmm. through. A lot of people don't realize, and I brought this up in past programs before, mm -hmm. a couple years ago we lost more dependents by suicide here in the state of Hawaii than we lost troops in combat. And that's another thing that wasn't talked about, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure Renee is aware, you know, a lot of things that goes on. But the thing is, it has to be addressed, okay? That's even right. if, yeah, even if you haven't, you know, had the opportunity to do so, mm -hmm. this is something that I believe is so important mm -hmm. that what I'm going to do as with the program here, we will contact the military and we will allow them to, or ask them to give a response, okay? Because the main thing we try, we're going to do here on the program mm -hmm. is give out information, not misinformation. That's right. But things that's going to help people out. And, you know, that's the reason why I wanted to, I invited you to come on the program to broach this subject because, again, I was woefully unaware of what was going on and I think with a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know? So, anyhow, Renee, are you, what are you familiar with or do you have any input on this? I'm not quite familiar with this issue because yeah. uh, I'm really my, just focused now on helping veterans. Yeah. I know they exist mm -hmm. and uh, I know there are support groups out there. Yeah. You might want to contact uh, Family Support Center or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There might be some uh, help you can uh, get there because that's what they're there for, especially yeah, for military families. The other thing I want to follow up on is you mentioned that when these young people out on the streets, mm -hmm. 
the da what's the danger period? 24 hours, 48 20, hours before 40, they get sucked 48 into hours, they will be, uh, they will be encountering drugs, they will be encountering sex uh, trafficking. Mm -hmm. And so we really have to have, have, have people out there. And Yo does that at night because they, they only do the, the, it's just a drop-in center and it's only open four days a week. Mm -hmm. That's all the money that they have. They're underneath the, uh, the Waikiki Health Center. Right. And so it's one program fighting amongst all the other programs for money, for whatever. And so we we have helped them because we've changed their diets, yeah. you know, with the fresh fruits and vegetables. They couldn't get them before. Yes. They're getting that. So we give them a lot of things that they don't. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, I can get uh, uh, certain things, mm -hmm. uh, not only at at Costco. Costco's my big, right. big person because I can get lots of things for mm -hmm. a good price. You know, so I'm a penny pincher. I have to because all of our money is donated from individuals. We don't have any grants. We don't. We haven't gone that route because we're just, you know, we're sort of small. But look at four years, never missing one week. Yeah, there's well, another thing that I'll mm -hmm. briefly mention this. Mm -hmm. Talk about the different organizations out there that's helping people in many different ways. That's right. I was surprised to find out there are thousands of nonprofits over here, and a lot of them have redundant systems where they're not connecting the dots, talking to one another mm -hmm. about what the, how to alleviate or you know some of these problems that's going on. Mm -hmm. It's like everybody got their own thing. Like say I'm going to do my thing. I don't want. I don't care what you do, but they may be doing the same thing. The end thing that we need to be thinking about is how it impacts the community, those who need to be helped. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that happening, like say for the large part. When you have thousands of nonprofits over here mm -hmm. on the island or the state this small, you know something's not right here. You know, and I think the questions need to be asked by those individuals who are you know, handling these different organizations. What is your purpose? What is your mission statement? Are you really trying mm -hmm. to do something that's worthwhile, or are you stroking yourself? You know. Mm -hmm. And I think that really needs to be, I mean, if we want to come up with some kind of cogent answer to some of these problems, mm -hmm. we need to talk about this in an open and honest way in a forum. The other thing that you mentioned before with some of the kids, they can't be um, signed, they can't go into the they shelters? Can't, they can't sign in. And that's, that's, a, that's a law. And there's a pushback from some of, from the, some of the legislators? Um, or? Well, it's a pushback also from the communities. Uh -huh. Because one of the people at the legislator said to me in a closed door, um, I think the Catholic Church needs to step up to the plate because uh -huh. they have a large number of kids on the street that come because of religious things. Mm -hmm. you, you, women can't get pregnant if they're not married. Uh, so if a young girl gets pregnant and they go, I'm sorry, not in my, not in my church, not in my home. Mm -hmm. And so there they are, out on the street at their most vulnerable, yep. you know. And so I did, uh, and there still is one organization Run by, it's a program run by the legislature, and they have both senators and representatives on it. It's called the Cakey Caucus. Mm. But when we go to the Cakey Caucus, we're volleying for attention to get our bills passed. Like I want a bill, you know, to open up the, for the kids, yeah. and and others want. And see, a lot of a lot of the agencies are funded by state and federal programs. Mm -hmm. So they want, you know, they they need to be there because they have to, you know, be front and center right. to make sure that their services are being, and I have nothing against them, mm -hmm. but you're right, we need to work a little bit more together yeah. because, um, but the money that I've been drawing, or we've been drawing for over four years, is from is from individuals that either have been in that position, right. they know, mm -hmm. and and I also, because I am a, 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 a social worker, I have my master's in social work, um, I have reached out into other areas, and the Navy called me okay. many years ago because they had a sailor mm -hmm. that had been accused of inappropriate behavior with another sailor. Right. Speaking of appropriateness, we have to take a short break. We'll oh, come okay. back, didn't mean to you know, interrupt you in mid-sentence. Okay. We'll finish up on that, then I want to get Renee as far as what, uh, yes. catch up with what he's doing. 
Okay, sure. we're going to take a short break. Come back. This is Hawaii Uniform. I'm Calvin Griffin. Stay tuned. Okay. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of the Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness-Mark. And every Monday at one o'clock, I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university, ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me one o'clock on a Monday afternoon to Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And see you then. Okay, welcome back to uh, Hawaii in Uniform. And uh, again, we're in the conversation about what's happening with the in military community. Uh, Carolyn is updating us on what's happening with the homeless situation and some other things also. And also, uh, again, Brene, you came back to join us. Uh, we're going to continue, but. Renee, how's things going with you? Last time we had you on the program, of course, you're a veterans advocate. You're trying to do things to help people alleviate or address PTSD, yes. all these things. Mm -hmm. Let our viewers know what you're doing and how it's going. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, I hosted a panel of uh, psychologists, uh, artists, mm -hmm. uh, doctors <coughs> at our last month's uh, Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 858 meeting mm -hmm. and uh, attended by the uh, organization members in which uh, they filled out some questions about uh, how we could help people with PTSD or any type of trauma mm -hmm. uh, that is causing them pain emotionally, physically, whatever. Yeah. And uh, it turned out very good. Mm -hmm. And there are people out there who are willing to take patients or clients, if you may call them, Mm -hmm. uh, to help them with their uh, program. Right. The uh, Veterans Choice Program is what we are trying to uh, uh, tap into, in which veterans have <clears throat> the option to choose a provider that is not necessarily available in the Veterans Administration Program. Mm -hmm. So they can go there and get the help that they need if they're not satisfied right. with what is going on in, mm -hmm. the, in their current situation. So that, uh, that program is available. It is highly encouraged, especially for our uh, chapter. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, uh, I, we know and you know that uh, VA is not a, a perfect uh, uh, place for some people. And, and, with all the issues that we have with the VA in the past, some people get a little bit kind of, they tend to shy away from the VA. Mm -hmm. So they offer that program, so they have the option to go to a provider that can provide them the help that they need. Yeah. And uh, uh, but that's what we do. Yeah. Well, it seems to be, no matter what issue we're talking about lately, homelessness, veteran situations, or whatever, it seems to be a problem where there is a disconnect. You know, we're talking in this case about the VA. Yes. All right, we know there's problems with that, all right? Um, of course, we're familiar with the number, I mean, the number of suicides, especially among veterans, is not being talked about, is yes. being underreported. We have roughly about 120,000 vets, give or take, over here, you know? And the thing is, with these different programs in place, oh, that's well and good. But there are times where, with systemically, there's some problems that are not being addressed or the people or the personnel are not handling it in the right way. And sometimes by having someone that, who's been there, done that, got the t-shirt and all that, like a mentor like you do with right. the, uh, the Veterans Treatment Court, all right? This is what we need more of, and I believe there are more people out there that want to get involved. But from what I'm hearing in a lot of cases, even if you want to volunteer, you want to do something that benefits uh, whatever issue it is, 
Then you got the bureaucratic mess where you got people who tell you, well, okay, well, I know you're good-hearted and everything else, but the thing is, you can't do that, all right? We have certain people. We have designated spots where these people can go to to find the help that they need. We don't need your help, all right? right. It's nice that you care, but stay away, all right? But that we need to break through that on all levels because if we really want to go ahead and do something that's going to be worthwhile for the community, all the different issues we're talking about, we need to get back to the grassroots. We need to we allow these people, whoever they are, and they're sincere in doing something, to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. You know, And I think that on too many levels, I keep stressing this over and over again, we need to go ahead and do that. You know, So I'm going to let you continue. I don't want to all get off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I know there are a lot of people who are still not comfortable going to the system. Yeah. That's why we're out there really trying to put the word out that, hey, you don't have to deal it mm -hmm. yourself. You don't have to go to the BA if you don't want to. That's why this option is available. And give it a try. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are plenty of holistic ways of getting the, the treatment or healing that they need. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be just the, uh, the VA way. Yeah. And I've seen yoga, I've seen <clears throat> Pilates, I've seen meditation, I've seen many different modalities mm -hmm. that could really help people with their pain. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we're yeah. trying to promote. Carolyn, you know, I'll throw this at you. Do you see, I mean, with all that you do with your organization, mm -hmm. I'm quite sure that you run into people who do want to help to do something and they run into certain speed bumps? Is speed that, bumps, uh, yeah. well, yes. Um, I keep getting people wanting to help out with us when mm -hmm. we go to Yo. Mm -hmm. They have to go through training mm -hmm. because this is for the safety of the kids yeah. to make sure that they're, the, the people that are there are vetted, have no back, you know, they do a fingerprint test and all that because you also have some uh, predators out there that yeah. like to get in that way. So we have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. So I just return them over to Yo and have, yeah. I said, but if you're going to be a, a volunteer, you have to take the training. Right. You have to, t you know, you have to, you know, yeah. and that's just the rules. Yeah. One of the things I was going to uh, my husband is a veteran, and he was invited to go to a, a veteran's coffee group out in Kapolei. They have one. And so uh, I was thinking that would be one way for people to get to get involved for you. Yes. Because, uh, and when he went, mm -hmm. he never got to sit with the guys. He had to go through, uh, they, they, wanted, they wanted to make sure he was a vet. They wanted to make sure, you know, what his background was mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. But he's going to start going to them because we met someone in a restaurant and mm -hmm. they were sitting at the next table. And that's yeah. just, so that's other ways people can right. uh, get help without going to the big pink lady on the hill. Yeah, the same way, you know, um, we see how these things intertwine. Yes. Renee, I wanted to ask you, what, uh, what you try to do to help the veterans out, does it come up sometime, the subject matter, like say of the, whoever the individual is, they're dependent, some of the problems they may be having or issues that um, you know are affecting them or delaying some of the um, positive responses to some of the treatments? Or, sometimes uh, <coughs> people especially people with PTSD, mm -hmm. are very close yeah. of divulging that information or mm -hmm. admitting that they have PTSD. So, yeah. so sometimes it takes time to really build that trust for them to crack open. Mm -hmm. so that's why you need to build that relationship. Got a dumb question for you. Sure. Is there anything called generational PTSD or Again, we have, like say, a lot of things that's going on within the families. Whoever the family, the military member is, they're going through it, and therefore that's in a certain way being passed. So I don't know if there's a term or ter terminology for it, but of course the stresses. You know, um, do you notice any of that, or some of the, the children that you run into? Um, do they divulge anything like that? That's just one of the reasons why they may be out there on the streets or left the military environment. Isn't there? No. I, ha I have not heard. Oh. Could be. Okay. But uh, trauma could be a cause of anything. Like in the yeah. military, mm -hmm. it's usually related to something that is traumatic, especially when people go to war, come back, and they're not the same because yeah. the experience they had in the war zone mm -hmm. is really just traumatic for them to 
Yeah. That they, sometimes they hang on to it mm -hmm. themselves. Okay. What I found when we were in the military that there are these stressors, depending on whatever the military member is involved in. Right. And one of our one of our friends, um, he caused stress within his family because he was just a really angry person, mm -hmm. and his children couldn't eat a meal. They never knew when he was going to come in. He, mm -hmm. he ended up having a girlfriend somewhere else. That's why they never knew when he was coming for dinner. Yeah. And the kids would go to sit down to eat, and they were always on guard. If dad comes in, he's going to throw a fit and, and disrupt dinner and maybe throw dishes at people. And, and those kids w would really shake. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know this because we were church friends. And then they kept coming over, and I, I would, our house has always been an open house. Right. And come over and have dinner. Hey, we're having such and such. Do you want to have it with us? And come over. And she told me after many months, almost a year, of, I was going, don't, would they want to go home? You know. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, my kids only can eat safely at your house, because they know their father's not going to come in mm -hmm. and disrupt the meal. Mm -hmm. That ends up being generational because of what he did to them. Mm -hmm. They had nervous stomachs, they were having medical problems, mm -hmm. but the military didn't want to look at that because, and she, uh, and, he had to, and he had told her, mm -hmm. do not take this to the doctors because uh, they're going to look at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can right? understand. See, so that that happens, or the poor um, military comes back, mm -hmm. and there's so many stressors. We could spend how many days talking mm -hmm. about stressors from those in the military? Yeah, you know. You know. Okay, we're getting down to the wire, but the one thing as far as this particular issue, um, yeah, I know it's difficult. There's certain things and time and place on mm -hmm. how to deal with things in the military. But once the question is out there, or it begs to be answered, mm -hmm. we need to do something about That's it. That's right. We got about 45 seconds anyhow. Renee, you can 10 seconds or 15 seconds. You want to give out any information or follow yes. up on that? Yes. Uh, actually, they can call me. My number yeah. is 808-800-7232. I do all kinds of meditation, mm -hmm. active, guided, or silent meditation, or even do calligraphy. Yeah. But mostly meditation to really just calm the mind, because right. when you quiet the mind, the body rests and gets healed. Great. Yes. Okay. We're going to do a follow up and then maybe sometime in the future you'll have a program here on the station. Caroline, again, okay. I think we're down to 15 seconds. But, okay. Uh, uh, call me. My phone <coughs> number's in the book. Well, there aren't many books anymore. 779 yeah. 9078. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions about not seeing a child yeah. in a family, you know, next door, across the street, in your rim, mm -hmm. let us know because. These families need to be, re if there is a value of saving the family, mm -hmm. regardless right. of whether they're LGBT mm -hmm. or not, there's okay. all kinds of reasons that they're out in the street. Okay. In about three seconds that we have left, I want to thank both of you for coming on the program. Thank you for tuning in. We'll do a follow-up, especially about the military thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, God bless until that time.